Okay, so in this class, we are going to talk about the Mule programming language. Okay. And that is, in other words, we'll say a data view. Okay. Now the data view, or we can program uh, programming language for MuleSoft. It has a lot of versions. Okay. And this guy is tightly coupled with Mule runtime. Or we can say tightly integrated with Mule runtime. If you go with the versions, okay. So Mule, the latest one is Mule 4.4. .4. This guy uses a data view. I'll say DW 2.4. Okay. So there are a lot of things added or improvements in 2.4. Okay, one of the improvement is very, 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 very important improvement is, let's say your <clears throat> memory size of your, let's say, you know, uh, is equal to, let's say, 1 MB. Okay, now if you are getting a payload more than 1 MB, automatically data will split it and write it to a file store and from there automatically it's it's access it won't throw any error out of memory issues okay so maximum right now is is 1.5 if you're getting more than 1.5 mb data per processing automatically it's chunk chunks it and write it to file store and from there it will start processing that is the biggest advantage i could see because we used to face a lot of problem with out of memory Okay, if I go for the 4.3 here, then there was a DW 2.3, then so on till if you go till go, you know, uh, the data 1.0, if you wanted to say, so that is started with 3.7, you'll find data view 1.0. And then you keep on growing, these guys also keep on improving. So when we create a mule project, right? As I mentioned, this is tightly integrated with this guy. So there itself in a transform, we can see the output or preview of my script. I can, during design time itself, I can decide whether I'm going in the right direction or not. Okay, that's the best advantage we'll get it, right? While writing the script itself, if you're able to see the, the output, right? That's what you can expect more than that, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's about a data view. It's a programming language and behind the sign, it uses functional programming. Okay. Now, what is this functional programming? It is basically, if you go ahead and uh, read about the functional programming, right? I would, I would recommend you to read about this. Okay. So I, I'll, I'll just uh, pick few points from there. So functional programming is nothing but So it will have pure functions. What do you mean by pure functions? Pure functions are something. If I give a X input and if it is generating Y input, always it will generate X for X input. It will always generate Y input. There won't be any effect or any, any, any side effect of anything is happening behind the scene or somewhere else. Pure functions always in any condition, they will generate for this X input, they will generate this Y input always. Okay. First, is, first instance or last instance or any time you execute these functions, they will generate the same output of for given uh, you know, input. So this is very easy to, this is actually, uh, you know, uh, make our debug processing easy. Second point, this is a pure function, okay? First point. Second point is immutable, immutable. Are you clear with immutable? You understand what is immutable means? 
not really uh, okay immutable variables that means if i say x is equal to 10 okay if i initialize this value while declaration itself then you cannot change this value anywhere in your script okay yeah got it okay because like python yeah yeah because we cannot do any assignment in the script data view script or uh, mule programming language or functional programming language we'll gen we'll take an input so this will be your input we'll generate output that output will become an input of other person or other function and that will generate other output this input won't get changed once this output becomes input it won't get changed so it's like a streaming okay if i'm passing input to this script here script will execute generate the output that script that output of that script will become a input of some other script that will generate or keep on going okay and your data view script your data view script can generate only one output your script cannot generate more than one output okay then comes the you know uh, these are the very, very important two things and then you know functions you know we can create our functions here in programming language and as i mentioned there won't be any assignment okay so one function generates output you cannot assign that output to in some variable or something no way okay there is no way here okay then there is something called lambda so these are terminology of functional programming uh, kunal okay so i'll i'll recommend you to please go ahead and read lambda functions okay lambda functions in pro, uh, functional programming language these are nothing but uh, we call it right anonymous function anonymous functions that means function will be there without any name so for example i can write something like this a comma b c that means this function is taking two parameters a and b and is performing c action and then it will generate the output this a or b it can be anything it can be object it can be the array it can be any other function in place of a you can pass anything it could be a uh, uh, another function it could be array it could be object it could be string it could be integer anything once it takes these two inputs it will go perform this c and whatever c is generating that will be output of this function okay in the data view 2.4 2.4 functions and variables are almost same okay we'll see the declaration of and the definition of this variable and function they're almost similar okay yep. so let's look at the 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 architecture of data view okay so if i go to my <clears throat> so the data view architecture looks like you know so every programming language will have architecture okay so you will have header then you will have three dashes and then you will have body this is body this is header part and this is a delimiter okay daily okay three parts will be there first second third so one two three now you want to decide what output supposed to be generated from here okay what will be the format output format basically so you can declare here if you want to create a function you can declare here you if you want to create a variable you can declare here variable functions you will decide the output format in the header section and you will say you will you will tell that what type of data view script you are using so dw2.0 so right now yes. we are using dw2.0 
2.0 that you will tell then you will decide output format then you will if you are creating any function you will give that definition over here if you are creating any variable you will give that de definition these functions these variables will be available for this script okay so this script will generate a output that will be there in dw format and then based on this output format this dw will be converted if i am saying csv this will convert it into csv if i am saying json it will get converted into json so reading and writing okay which type of data we are reading which in which type i wanted to for, for you know format convert it developer don't need to worry about it reading and writing is very easy so developer they are free from reading and writing so developer needs to focus on their logic what that logic is transform logic whatever script you are going to write just focus on this area how to read how to write that is very very simple so no tension for developers to you know focus on how i can write xml data how i read the xml data how i will read the json okay you know blah 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 so that is out of the scope and developers can focus on their <clears throat> i would say focus on you know the transform logic only okay clear yes now let's go ahead and look at the the uh, you know the in the project how it looks okay so let's go ahead and create a simple project so once we create the uh, you know mule project so we can write this script at multiple you know level okay so it could be a configuration script it could be a transform script why i am saying configuration because the connector level will be using the script so you, you can you can take multiple examples okay so if i drag a logger here and if you see here this is a when i select <coughs> fx this becomes script if i remove that fx selection it becomes a literal okay literal and script same section now here i can write my data view script this is called configuration if i go to listener here okay in listener if you go to the edit mode tls configurations right all are literals here if i go to my requester component i'm just taking some examples okay so if i go here yes i got it <clears throat> okay so wherever you see fx right there we'll be writing our data view data view okay yeah let me delete all those things i don't want it i think i i have deleted wrong one okay no problem okay now let's drag a transform and let's try to understand what all things will be there okay let it load okay cool okay so let me maximize this guy now you'll see here the transform activity has a data sensing data sensing power okay so we'll be in the in the any point studio behind the scene we'll be running the tooling service okay that tooling service will help us what data is coming to this transform activity what data will be going out of this transform activity okay so that will and second point is it's tightly integrated with mule runtime so it automatically generates the output for you so if i say preview right now okay so you'll be able to see that uh let's let's load it <clears throat> oh 
Okay, we'll run a preview here. So right now it's contacting mute runtime and it's running the script and then it will be generating preview here. Okay, so let, let it let it do that. Okay. So now here we can define our metadata. Okay, so whenever you want to execute our transform activity, okay. So what we can do, we can define and we can define a metadata over here and we can say that, okay, this type of data I can expect for input. Okay, so you can go ahead here and you can define that metadata here. Okay, so you can create a type, let's say, I say uh, employee uh, XML here, okay? You can go ahead, create it. We can't do much, we need to wait for this. Yeah, bye. I mean, it's the same issue. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that is one more thing. And we have, we have something called data view playground. Okay. We can go ahead here and we can write our scripts here directly. We can import and export from here. So I'll recommend you to go to this tutorial. Okay. Kunal, and finish this off. Okay. So you are seeing green marks here. Okay. Go ahead and try to read this okay if you if you if you try okay. to finish this assignments from here it will be good for your understanding okay so they have given so many examples here okay so this is a data view playground they have given so let's go to the playground you can export the script or you can you can test your script over here you can input your payload but it is, it is, it is, uh, uh, it has some limitations. We cannot run big period over here. <laughs> so we need to be very careful. Okay. So export and import, we can do it uh, from here. And then that database script, you can, you can directly put it in your, uh, you know, a mule project. Okay. Let's see whether it's loaded or not. It's still loading. It's just really bad, really bad. Okay. So let's not do this. Okay. So there, there is option, okay, here. So we'll, I don't know whether it will allow me. It's not allowing me, okay. We can come back, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. we'll use a data view playground for that. So let's go ahead. Now we have seen, this is the body, right? <clears throat> and this is the, uh, this is the header. And this is the body, okay. So now let's try to see. So this side you see, so you can pass object. This is called object. Okay, so curly bracket, it represents the object. This part, left hand side of your colon represents the key and the right side of your colon represents the value. Okay, this is the pay payload we are getting inside our screen. Then we have something called in, 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 in uh, square bracket, we'll get the array. In array, you can have object, you can have, you know, you can have strings. It doesn't mean that array you'll have, uh, you, you'll be having homogeneous data. No, in array, you can have heterogeneous data also, objects, strings, integer, anything. Okay. And then finally, you, you may have a uh, string also. Okay. So you can have screen, uh, string in double quotes. So we'll be able to read that in. So there is no uh, you know, no restrictions or limitations on incoming data. Okay. We can get any type of data. We can convert into any type of data. So few examples, if I want to take it right. So let's, let's, let's look at the use case. If I want to take the use case, uh, you know, I can go ahead and, uh, I can say, uh, uh, if I get the XML, right. I, I can convert into a, a JSON. If I get XML, I can convert to a flat file. Okay. So our focus is only to write the transform logic. Our developers focus should be on writing the transform logic. Okay. So let's go ahead and try with simple examples. Let me check again whether it's loaded or not. This is really bad, man. Okay. Let's not worry about it. Okay. So let's start with a very simple 
example over here i'll say okay i as i mentioned right so this first line is talking about your data view script okay which version we are using and uh, this is output we are generating and the output type now in the in the data view 2.4 right we don't need to write application slash json directly we can use the id this is mine type okay we can directly use a, a mine type id itself json still it will create the output you know so let me let me remove this and you'll be able to see proper output see here left hand side directly i can say csv xml directly i don't need to write application slash blah 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 okay now here I can go ahead and I'll say I can so when it was used like application dot uh, JSON or that is complete mind type okay it was used in two dot three okay you know uh, previous version we need to write complete mind type okay and now this JSON is ID of that mind type so we are reducing the number of you know you know characters in the script in other way I would say okay but both ways similar. where array i can go ahead and, and define my array here it's a declare and define so i can pass some values one two three four here now whatever you have declared here okay we can go ahead and access it in our in our uh, code okay so we can say that okay so let's yeah, loaded. Okay. So we'll see that in, in one of the example, we'll use this part also. Okay. So let's go ahead or let it finish. So you can define the metadata. You select what kind of data you are expecting in the input. Go ahead, say, say XML. And then if you have that XML, okay, metadata or, you know, mock data, we say, go ahead and say example, select that. Okay, so you pick it. Uh, I have somewhere in my. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say. I have sample data. Hope I have. Sample metadata. So I'll just load the employee.xml. Okay. So it will load the employee here. Select. So it will create a schema also, and it will load that employee data over here. Okay, let it load. Okay, so now we'll come back here. Now we can go ahead and we can say that. Now let's have a look at it very simple. All right, you'll see that. Right, it's getting, you know, in same format, whatever I'm expecting. We can go ahead and we can say, hey, give me a data from zeroth location. Give me the data from, so I can give the range also here. Okay, so I can say that, hey, give me data from one to three. See here. Now, Index in, in data view or in a, a, a most of the programming language index start with zero. So zeroth element means this, first element means this, and third element means this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And in functional programming, in functional programming, let me let me come back here. In functional programming, if I am defining my array, the last indexed, okay. I'm not sure you whether you are aware of it. One, two, or dot 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 let's say here 100 okay now if you want to get the last number so the index start like this zero one minus one two yes 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 okay you are talking about minus one and then yeah. you will get okay so answer. from here it will start with minus one then minus two minus three it will come like this so from here also you can access from left to right also you can access right to left also so let's look at that example this will be very useful okay so if you go ahead and say that okay give me so what you can do let's go back here and no, not here 
I don't want to use that guy. Okay, so come here. And now if I say, hey, give me data for minus three to three. So have a look at it. Minus three to three. Minus three is what? Minus one, minus two, minus three. Minus three means two. Two. Output. Okay. And if I say instead of three, if I say minus one, same output. Clear? Or now if I say, okay, so this, this is very simple accessing, right? So I'm just taking a uh, simple example. So uh, the commenting here, we can use the double slash, whatever uh, we use in other programming language. So now what I can say, hey boss, can you go ahead and uh, you know, now, okay. So if you want to see the size of this array, there is a keyword, uh, there is a function size of, and all function names are camel case. Okay, if you remember, you go ahead and write camel case. So let's say size of, index of, value of, okay. So we'll be, we'll be using, so whenever there are, there are two words attached, always the function name you can expect, uh, you know, in camel case. Now let's say this is an array. You want to uh, get only, you know, um, only even numbers from here. Okay. So what you can do, you can use some inbuilt functions. Like for example, I can say, okay, go ahead and say. So now, now, now you look at this. Okay. So if I write the size of this guy is taking this array as an input. Okay. And it's generating output. We cannot store this output anywhere. There is no provision. I can pass this as input of other function. Okay. So now if I go ahead and pass input of other function, I can say, Hey, I can say is even. And I'll say, so if I, if I, if I'm generating this output, let me see. Control V. So what I, I got the input to this is even function is the input of the output of this size of function. Okay. And size of function was returning me four and that passed on to this is even and four is even. Okay. Now, if you wanted to have if you want to check is even on this array, actually we, we have checked it on four. Now, if you want to check it on this array, what we can say, Hey, go ahead, go inside. Okay. Take array as an input and iterate over this array for iterating. Now, one more thing. Okay. In functional programming, you won't find for loop, you won't find while loop. In other words, in functional programming, looping is not allowed. Okay, looping is not allowed. You won't be won't finding this uh, for and while loop in 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 data view language, uh, in pro in functional programming. Okay, so there are other ways of you know implementing this part. So iterating or array is a for loop, right? So we need to go ahead and Try to find a function to do that job. So there's a function called map. Okay. So map, what it does, it goes, if I enter, so it takes the element from there and index. Now you can give whatever name you want here. You want to give the, uh, your, your user defined names. You can go ahead and that flexibility we have. And this is called Lambda function. Okay, so we are saying, hey, go to that array, iterate with that array, get the first element in data and index of that element to position. And then what I'm saying now, this is a lambda function, right? Now, uh, now I want to perform some operation. So I'm saying is, okay, is even. And now what, what you want to check it here? 
because the data is representing the element from there. So it will iterate on each element. So that means this data is representing element on each iteration. Okay, so if the iteration is first, it will represent to one. If it is iteration second, it will represent two. So this map will return the data if this function returns a true. So I can go ahead and say, hey, if the data is even, give me that. Okay, so now have a look at it. See here, it's saying that first element is not even, second element is even, third element is. So I can say here, if, can I write something like this? If If this is true, okay, then data. I'll write properly. So you can go ahead here and we can say that in curly bracket, so if you look at properly, This is closing here. So you need to be very careful when we're writing, okay? So let's not write that complex. So we'll come back to that. Are we clear so far? Yep, little bit. <laughs> okay, not little bit. It has to be very clear, okay? So let's let, let me comment everything. Again, okay, we'll go back, okay? So now you have array. I just wanted to get the even uh, you know elements from here. Right. What I can do, I can go ahead and uh, uh, let's 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 take this example. Okay. So I'll, I'll simplify this. So let's say we have array. So now that and I want to calculate the the square of each element. Okay. So what I can do, square of element means we need to iterate over every, every element, right? And go ahead and say, okay, I want the element from here, okay, and I'll say, go ahead, and for each element, you do this, okay, so now you see, right now we are getting empty, right, for each element, we are getting empty array, or I'll say, n into n. See here and what happens here okay so this is a the this this is this from this array i'm taking element and that element i'm representing by n you can you can represent by anything this is what i wanted to try you okay so now since we are representing it as a data instead of n you need to write data so what happens here it takes the element okay so map function it takes the list. If you, if you carefully see, it takes the list, returns the list. This is the property of map function. It takes one type of list, convert second type of list. So it takes X type of list. So here we have one, two, three, four, and it generates the Y type of list, which is the square of all the elements. This function is not changing the input. It's just generating the new output. Okay. Still, if I go after this, the array will be representing only one, two, three, four only. Okay. I cannot change this. So that is what initially when I said, right? Immutable variables, this array, we cannot change it in the body at all. The functions, they are not changing any data. They are just taking input. They are just generating output. That's it. Okay, they are not changing the data internally. No way. Okay, so now <clears throat> this map function we can use in different ways. So right now I am giving the names of the for representation I am giving a name. If I don't use this, okay, if I don't use this, there are 
<coughs> the same output I can generate by using internal variables. The internal variables are dollar, double dollar, and triple dollar. Sorry. Enter triple dollar. These are internal variables. Okay. We cannot use these variables in our database script. If you want to use it for our purpose, okay. If you want to use it, then we need to write escape character for them. Okay, we'll see that in, in some of the examples when we'll be try, we'll be, you know, simply try dollar, it won't work. Okay, so because these are having some meaning, uh, you yep. know, we can say uh, system variables, we can say that, right? I, I tried that and I was having error because yes. I need to uh, supply this value. This is hard coded in one of their values. So oh, I tried no. to put this, but it, it okay. didn't work. Then I put uh, slash forward slash. Uh, yes, and... that is that is what is skip character. But right. will it parse at that uh, this in data script or not? Data yeah, script. it will pass. We'll see that now. Okay. okay. So now what it it these guys are present uh, representing? We need to see. Okay. So now if you see the dollar, if you are going with object, okay. So this guy represents value. Okay, where I'm writing it? Come on, it went somewhere. Okay, so this guy represents value of that key. Value of that key. So, for example, if I'm writing something like this, okay, so if I say key colon value value, so right now my input is similar way, see, it's object. Okay, so right now the key value, right? So let's go ahead and see. Can I access this? So if I say, uh, you know, payload. Okay, so if I something is happening, I don't know what. Okay, so payload is the complete object okay and if i go down and if i say it's a payload i'm getting it right so i'll say uh i wanted to iterate over it right so payload has to be array let's see we'll take array and then map and if i say go ahead i don't want to define any names over here and then simply wanted to say, okay, now have a look at it. I say key. And if I say dollar, have a look at it. Right? All the values are coming as so dollar represents the, the value. Okay. And if I want to take the position, okay, so I can say double dollar here. And double dollar. So when when we are writing this double dollar this side or whatever, either you need to give a literal value or we need to execute it. So you need to get that value. Either you directly define it or give the executable script, then only it will calculate. So for example, right now you see I didn't define any name over here to represent my data, represent my my position or index. Now I can go ahead and use the <coughs> inbuilt variables, which are dollar and double dollar. So right now in my array, only element and position is there. Okay. Sometime what happens? You'll be having key value and position. Key, key, value and position. So this Right now, position is indicated by double dollar. Third one, so I can say second one here is a key. Okay. <clears throat> and this one is position. Okay. Clear? Whenever we are writing this side, we need to be very careful. 
okay we mm -hmm. need to execute if we are we are trying to access something so now if i give something here if i say uh, data comma position can i can i access now dollar and double dollar no once you define them this becomes meaningless okay they won't carry anything the moment you define this variables over here if you don't define then only you'll be able to access this clear okay so yes. map object always expect the collection now if i give an object like this eh, this is a payload is the object okay can i go ahead and iterate over this so for example here let's say i have um come on i have let's say um id so now in this object i have two elements one is representing message another is representing id okay so let's go ahead and we'll talk about so right now we were iterating over the array now can i reiterate all these fields inside my object yes possible okay so what is the payload right now so if i represent the payload this is this okay i can go ahead and the payload is not array not collection and i want to iterate over the object fields then i can use a function called map object now see in the map object value key and index index now value is dollar key is double dollar index is what triple dollar okay so if i don't define anything over here okay if i don't define anything over here what will happen now i can go ahead and i can say delete everything simple go down <clears throat> so need to say round bracket now see i have one object right now let's say i just go ahead and say um, i'll say i'll write like this okay so i'll say dollar means what okay the dollar means let's see what happens now see dollar means hello world right now comma <clears throat> i'll say double dollar that is message and yeah, ID. double dollar double dollar colon if i say double dollar this side now see okay now if i go down again and if i go down and i represent triple dollar now see right so you can see here the triple dollar represents the zero that means the position this guy represents the message that is a key and a hello world is the value so dollar represents the value double dollar represents the key and triple dollar represents the position index clear yep so we are discussing basic okay kunal right now because i i don't want to take any any complex uh, stuff right now <clears throat> okay if now, you don't want if you don't want uh, the index uh, value then can we avoid that if you don't want index value yep that is triple dollar right yeah index. so can we avoid that yeah, you don't need to add here right that's what you are saying correct yep yeah. just go ahead and remove it only okay. key and value you, mm -hmm. you need to decide here okay so your okay. focus should be on this transform logic only okay so we have seen how to iterate over array we have seen how to iterate over object also right now let's go ahead and try to play with some real stuff okay so now let's say i have okay so let's let's see few more questions so when we load a data view, what happens? It automatically imports this guy. Okay, automatically. 
so this function will be there always import uh, you know uh, dw these guy will be automatically whatever functions are available here in this particular package all the functions will be added so for example i can say star from something like that this is it is imported here automatically okay so this we don't need to import anything whatever is there in the dw core i will recommend you to please go ahead there's a very big list um you know in that so you can go ahead and read about it okay 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 so now our employee code here this side see it's 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 uh, you know loaded so you can go ahead and if i say uh, can you go ahead and just say json boss and uh, i simply use a payload control space you try to use it will auto complete that okay so preview <clears throat> Application resource not found. So I think we need to. Now it's really hard to work with the script. Okay, so close this and open it. Try to open something else and go back. It should not throw any error. Okay. And if I go to preview now. They are expecting it's uh, you know uh, it's faster now seven dot fourteen but <laughs> I'm facing a lot of problem. Okay, now you see here, simply automatically it will convert your your data. So if you want to see the metadata what what we have received, so here see if you just say simply may you know, edit metadata, you'll be able to see these things. Now if you closely look at this guy. Okay, so I, I took little little complex example uh, where we have a lot of things. Okay, so if you look at this employee, we are losing. So when I convert as it is from XML to JSON, you will see uh, we are losing this data. See ID, nowhere it's coming in the JSON. Okay, so some data yes. from 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 XML to JSON. If you convert XML to uh, JSON we can easily convert, but XML to CSV if you want to do right. Let's say mm -hmm. I want to do CSV right. Automatically it won't work. Okay. So if you see here if we are getting error. Now one thing I told you right, CSV is expecting what array of records, collection of records, and payload is what payload is an object. See under employees you have so if you see. The, it's an object. So you need to tell, hey, boss, where is the collection? So unless I give a collection to this, uh, unless I generate the collection from this script, it won't get converted to CSV. Right now, this script is giving me what object? I cannot convert object into CSV. So we need to understand these basics. Okay. So if I have, uh, for example, uh, now let me take a uh, one more example okay so let's copy this <clears throat> control a control c if i go to my here i need to change this and say this is xml okay so we'll, we'll come back to a few more uh, basic functions but let me just wanted to show you so this is xml now right and oh. right now uh, i don't know to use like this okay so payload so if you go ahead and say, hey, now we're talking about actually data selector, okay? Hey, give me a single uh, you know, uh, value. So I'll say dot. This dot is a single value selector, okay? So in this XML, if you carefully look at the XML, there is a root tag, okay? Yeah, department as well, yeah. Yeah, there is a root tag called employees. Employees, okay. And I'll go ahead and say, hey, give me employees. One element. Inside that, all things are there, but this is the single value selector. Dot means. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, here we have only one, one element, right? Now, under employees, we have multiple employees. Have a look at it. Now, if I write like this, what happens? See how many employees are there? 
this many employees are there, but it's selecting. See, these many employees are there, right? One, one, two, two, three, three, and blah, blah, blah. So this dot actually selects only one element from either it's a collection or it's an object. It will select only one value from there. This is actually equivalent to if I go ahead and say, see here, exactly similar. From this implies give me first element that is exactly similar to this. Now try to understand, okay, I'm going little, little deeper so that you'll, you'll get clarity. So this is equivalent to square bracket dot employee. <clears throat> okay, both are giving me same output. Now, can I say, hey, in this employee, can you give me all the employees in array format? So there is a selector called multi-value selector dot and star. Now have a look at it. Now all the employees are selected and those are coming as a array now. Clear? Now if yes. I say convert this into a CSV, let's see what happens. CSV. No. Why? Because inside that object, if you remember, we are getting one more object. Object cannot be converted into CSV. Uh -huh. Right? That's the reason it's saying that. Cannot force object to string. What was that object? Let's go back and see. So, the main fund of writing the scripts, right? Go back to the point. Go back to the point where your script was working. Okay? So now you can see here, see here department is having object. If you give a, 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 a string over here, it will work. Now, because of this, it's not able to convert into a CSV. Now, if you want to convert this, we need to really play with that. Okay. So, but let's not do that. Okay. Right now. Now, if you remember, as I said, single value selector, very clear single dot will be using multi value selector then you need to go ahead with dot and star now there is something called descendant value selector what do you mean by the descendant value selector okay so for example uh i need to check the i need to take one example okay just hold on okay i'll just go ahead to my Are you able to see my browser? I'll just uh, data view. Yeah. So right now we are using data view 2.4. Okay. So make sure you're using the latest one and uh, uh, data view examples. Uh, selectors are there selectors extract data. We'll talk about this also in a moment. So I think uh, we should have da, 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 da. Da, control F selectors. I just wanted to take the example from here. Yeah. So now see here, single value selector dot multi value selector star we need to put. Okay. And then if I want a key value pair. Okay, so right now, if you see, we are getting, uh, yeah, we'll talk about, yeah, descendant or uh, selector I was uh, you know, wanted to have. Okay, dot, dot, yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's take the example first. Okay, so I just wanted to take the example so that I can clearly show you. Uh, yeah, this is the example I'll take. Okay, so copy this. This is my, yeah, control C. We'll go to our, yeah, instead of this, I want this one now. It's very easy to test it here, okay? Instead of going to that any point studio and wait for so many things, okay? So now let's, uh, okay. Now, what do we mean by this? Okay, what I wanted to say here. So if I want to, if I want to select the 
the single value from there, right? So payload dot. If you see people, I'll get the single value. Now, if you go inside and if I say, hey, give me the name and value. Name, wherever key name is there, give me those, okay? So there is something called dot dot. And now if I type name, see here. Hmm. You're getting it, right? Yes. So wherever there is a name, it could be in any, any level. Look at the left hand side. I have name over here. I have name over here. I have name over here. I didn't say give me uh, a specific level, right? So if I go ahead and say something like this, dot, let me remove this. Let Please focus, okay? Pay attention. So now if I say double dot, single dot, if I go to people, and inside the people, there is something called person, right? Now then if I say dot name, what do you expect here? Only this guy, because I'm going and saying select single value, select single value, select single value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want all the names values, wherever keys are there, I can say double dot. That's it, cool. shortcut. Clear? Yes, but uh, okay. This is a uh, value, right? We... Yeah. And now if you want key values, oh. just put a ampersand over there. Okay. So what we have seen, single value, multi-value, descendant, and uh, the key value also. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Right. So let me take more few more examples so that you'll get clarity. So what we have covered so far, single value selector, yes, or array. Yeah, we just now seen. Dot star, we have seen multi-value selector. Multi-value selector. Uh, descended, just now we've seen. And key value pair, if you want to have, right? So instead of only value, if you want key also. So user is a key, right? So for example, if we take this, Okay, very, 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 very good, good one, good example, this one. So if I go ahead to my control V, okay. So now if you look at here, what if I wanted to have only specific key values without writing any, any uh, conditional logic? I wanted to say, hey, give me uh, the key value pairs for users only. I don't want admin at all. Okay, so if I go here, what I can say, hey, payload dot users. Okay, so if I say users, I'll get all the users. Okay, but I'm not interested in all the users. I am interested in users where key is user. So how, how what I can say, simply dot <coughs> ampersand, then I can say, give me user. See here, if I want admin, I'll go ahead and say admin. Now simply, see simple code. I, I'm not writing any conditional logic or any complex logic, right? Very simple yes. concept. Mm -hmm. Right? You're getting it, right? Yes. Yeah. Let's go back. A few more, few more interesting things are there. Then uh, we'll jump on to some more complex. Uh, yeah. So descendant key, key value pair. That's also we have seen. Index selector, we have already seen, right? One, minus one, all those things we have seen over object. This we have seen. I just wanted to show you one more quick stuff. Okay, all these things we have seen. Zero to one, minus one to zero. A range selector, this is also we have seen, right? Zero to one. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about this, uh, but okay. So let's talk about few things. So, uh, where is my input? Uh, 
input XML. Is this input XML? No, where is the input XML part? We need a, actually examples to, you know, show the proper uh, script. Okay, so if this is, when I say, go back to my data view playground, say, control A, control B, now, okay. So now let's say, I'll, I'll try to show you two things here, okay. So now, we have namespace and let's let me go here and add an attribute here okay so let's say id is equal to i'll say one two three four okay and if i say payload Okay, so now if you see what happens here, we have converted XML to JSON, but few things we are actually losing. What are those? We are losing namespace. We are not able to see namespace at all in my output here. Okay, and the attribute was there. That one also we are missing. Okay, so this inside the tag, some values are hidden. Those values won't come automatically in JSON or CSV. Okay. So now if I want to get those values, what happened? I need to first go ahead and uh, iterate over this, right? So I can say a payload dot. I can say name. Uh, no, no, no. Order, right? First element is order. Order. Okay. So whatever is there in the order, I'm able to see the data, but still I am missing the attribute as well as the namespace. Now, if I want to get the namespace, I can go ahead and say hash. See here, I'm able to get that namespace. Now, second thing, inside order, there is a name field, right? Name. And now if I want to access that attribute, I need to say dot at the rate. Okay, now see, you are able to see the attribute also. ID is equal to 1, 2, 3. So we need to manually add this when we are converting XML to the JSON. We need to keep this in mind. Some information will be losing. Okay, now have a look at it. Simple. <clears throat> I don't need to write any code. I am reading XML. And with a simple single line, we are able to convert into a JSON. Or, you know, even we are able to convert into a CSV. Have a look at it. Okay, so if I say simply payload here, so I need to say dot order, you will be able to see CSV. Now, when we are converting to CSV, you know, we have seen so many things. So uh, uh, if you remember, if you go back, you know, few sessions back, we talked about, you know, one of our, in our, uh, let me, let me bring that. I recall what all things we have added. So if I, if, if you are taking JSON to XML or uh, XML to CSV, right? So we talked about few, uh, you know, directives here, right? In the header part. <clears throat> so right now we have separator, by default separator is comma, right? So we yes. can have here, it, is it coming? No, no suggestions, right? Oh, that's fine. Separator. In header, you won't get uh, you know, suggestions. That's, uh, <clears throat> I think, they can do some improvement here so that if, if I don't remember exact, uh, you know, keyword, right. They mm -hmm. can give me a suggestion over here. So yeah. instead of comma, if you want something like this, we have discussed this, right. See here. Now your delimiter is <coughs> our separator is 
the the you know or operator now we talked about quote also remember so i'll just go ahead and one more thing will add it so i'll say uh, quote equal to single code and uh, you know if i say uh, quote values right values i think hope i remember properly quote values is equal to and here you need to say hey go ahead and say quote yeah so syntax has to be correct comma now you see here now, how this this guy is helpful? If your value has you know uh, you know separator character itself. Now, for example, if I go here and say in order itself, if I have something like this, right, or something like this, ex special characters, then that will that will be taken care by uh, this guy. So, in the value, if I go ahead and in the mark. Right, see here. So within within the single code, whatever is there, that will be considered as value. If I if I say false, right? Now this file won't be able to process properly in your uh, you know target system. Okay, mm -hmm. if they have delimiter as you know uh, this or operator, then this ma will be treated as one value, arc will be treated as one value, so that will go to items and then a then the lot of problems will be there. So always try to have quote values equal to true. true. Okay, we have seen these issues and that's the reason I am, so you can go ahead and say double quote also. Okay. So you need to give, see here now, double quotes, okay. You can go ahead and have the quotes for header also. So if you if if you if you don't want header right we have something called here if you are not really interested in header we can say by default header is equal to true okay if you don't pass i can go ahead and say false again i'm missing mm. comma so now <clears throat> if you don't want to pass header you can go ahead and go ahead with this now if you want <clears throat> in a for header also so let's let's let, let's comment it okay so i'm getting header now, uh, what if we want header after like every one page or something like that? Every one page? What do you mean by that? Like the file might be long, okay? A CSV uh -huh. file might be long. So uh -huh. if we want to see the header after uh, like some value, like after 10 or 20 or 30. Not uh, possible. Not possible. Not possible. Not possible. Okay, so if okay. you want to have for uh, 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 header for I know quote for header also, you can go ahead and say, hey, give me header for quotes or uh, header. Uh, give me quotes for header also. Okay, so all these things we can do it in our transform itself. Okay, so we can play with, and this this all things are getting applied on the output of our script. First output will be generated. And then these things will get applied on that. Okay. Clear? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Now let's look at uh, you know a uh, few things. So for example, uh, very very simple thing we'll we'll try to see. So if I go ahead here and uh, say so, let's say I'm getting a. I'll keep as it is. No worries. Uh, but it will create some problem. So let's say JSON. JSON, okay, and let's say I have a string here, okay. So let's say where str is equal to some string I am uh, adding here. So let's say okay. <clears throat> now let's say this is how we are getting the you know uh, input. Now what I want to do here is I want to so this is str, right? If I print it, it will print like this. Okay. 
So if I say dot, okay. Uh, all these things we have already seen. How to access this first, uh, you know, character, second character, and all that, and uh, all this. Uh, we can give the range also. Now we'll try something. So I'll say split by. Okay. Now split by will expect a single output. And on what basis you want to split? So I'll say, hey, go ahead and split it on on no space. So all the characters will get splitted here. If I say this, it, it will give me. Okay. <clears throat> you can split and get the array out of it. Now, this input we can pass on, uh, this output we can pass on to other function. We have a function called join by. I'll say join by. And what basis you wanted to join? Okay, so go ahead and say, okay, go ahead and join on space basis. So split by will split your string into array. Join by will convert your array into a string. Clear? Yes. Okay. So these are few basics. We have not, uh, you know, jump on to the, to mm -hmm. the, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Complex queries. Complex queries. Okay. So now we are going to jump on complex queries now. Okay. Let's have a look at it. Okay. So now we'll bring our employees.xml. I think we are loaded somewhere. So let's make, keep it, you know, bring it here. Okay. So where is that? I think we have written here, I guess, right? Yeah. Copy this. Copy, bring it here. Control A, Control V. Okay. Now let's, let's clean this code. So we are going to write JSON, okay? Yeah. Now let's print this payload. Now if I say payload dot employees, let's recap few things. I'll get object. Inside that object, I have multiple employees. Those employees are, we can say players, belongs to different domain. Some are coming from you know, cricket, some are coming from chase, some are coming from coming from manufacturing, okay? Okay, now if I say dot employee, we have seen already, right? So this script we have already seen, employee. Now I'm getting all the employees, okay? Now if you look at this, all the employees are coming from different, different department, okay? Now can I group this based on the department? Yes. Now this input, I can pass on to other function and this function is coming from core package. Okay. Since the core package is already added, I can use this function called group by. Now group by will expect, hey, give me, give me the, so I can use the lambda function here also, or directly I can say, hey, since I am, uh, you know, a, uh, I'm using this input and this input is actually what? Array of elements. In each element, that element will be represented as dollar dot. If you remember inside that element, so this employee is an element. Inside that there is a department. Inside that there is a name. So I can say dollar. Okay, again, I'm going back. Okay, have a look at it. What will be the output of this script? So you need to go back and see. So this is the output, okay? Now, in this, the dollar is actually representing this guy. Okay, because this is the element. Double dollar will be representing what? The position of this element. Okay? So dollar is representing right now this element. Now, if I want to access department, the, what I... What double I dollar, will, double, double dollar, dollar will... Double dollar will give you a position of this, index of this position, particular. Uh, that, that is the triple dollar, right? No, no, no. In this case, in array elements, I told you, right? In object, okay. in object, triple dollar will show you the position. Double dollar will tell you the key. And key. single dollar will do the key value. Uh, value. Right now, we are talking okay. about array. Okay. The dollar will represent this complete object. Double dollar represents the position here. 
we don't have triple dollar option in RA. RA. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me uncomment this. So this is a based way of writing scripts. Okay. Go one step back where it was working. And if you have to see the output of that, basis on that you write. Don't look at left hand side now. You need to see what, what is the output of this script, this script. Okay. Which is an array. And in array, we have elements, all employees. Now, what I'm saying is, hey, give me uh, department. Okay. And group by is actually expecting a single string. You cannot give any object to this guy. Right now, dollar dot department is giving object. Now, inside that, I'm saying, hey, go and uh, give me the based on name. So now see all the employees are grouped by. So now in cricket, we have two Sachin and Rahul. In chase, we have Vishwanath and, and Mag uh, Mag Magnus. And in manufacturing, we have Elon Musk. And in software, we have Mandela and Hitchin. Okay. And Mayor also. Three guys are there. Now have a look at it. Looks little, little uh, simplified now. I could see that both the guy, I know now this, these are grouped by now. Now, mm -hmm. can I say, you know, based on the employee size uh, or number of the department size, now cricket, how many are there? Two are there. In chess, two are there. In manufacturing, how many are there? One there. In software, three are there. Can I order these guys? Based on the number of employees in that department. So I can go ahead. And what I can say, order by is the function available. Order by. Now, again, I can say on what basis you want to order. Okay. So I'll say, I want to order. Now this time, tell me. Okay. So again, I'll, I'll comment this part. Now, this is the output I have. Now tell me what dollar will represent. Now what double dollar will represent. Now this is object. Okay. Keep this in mind. Hmm. Now tell me what dollar we represent here, what double dollar we represent here, and what triple dollar we represent here. So Even. here, do dollar will uh, represent key value that is uh, first name, uh, key value pair, like right? first name and searching. Uh, double dollar we uh, suggest uh, the key uh, that is first name, last name, and this designation department. No, 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 just hold on, just hold on. This is object, right? Mm -hmm. The double dollar will represent this cricket. Single dollar represents this complete value of this cricket. Right? Till here. Okay. Now, and triple dollar will give you the position of this cricket. Right? That mm -hmm. is what I wanted to you know, know your understanding. Right? Okay. Now, these are key values. Right? Cricket is a key. Chase is a key. And manufacturing this key. Now we are ordering this element. These are the elements and values are here. Now okay. I have to order it. So basically I want to check the size of this value. And this value is represented by dollar. So can I say, can I say size of dollar? <clears throat> if I say like this, what will happen? Try to understand. Okay. I can repeat it again. Okay. If that is not, if it is getting more complex, let me know. That's the reason I'm going step by step. So first we have taken all the employees. We have array list. Now what we have done, based on the department name, we have grouped them. Now each department is representing set of employees. Now the set of employees are represented by dollar. The department name is represented as a double dollar. And the position or what position? The way we got the data, that same position we have created the groups. Okay. Now okay. that position is represented by triple dollar. Now, if I say order by size of dollar, now have a look at it. Whoever is having less employees, that guy will come first. So automatically ordering the them, you know, ascending. Uh -huh. So cricket has a two, chase has a two, that's like the same order, no change in the order, but software has a three employees. So it went in the last position. Can I reverse this position uh, ordering? Yes. Simply go ahead and say minus. That's it. Now see the manufacturing is coming down and the software will be there in the top. Clear? Can we uh, adjust by ourselves like a dollar in between cricket first and uh, 
what what was the another chess hmm. at last oh. uh, no there then you need to uh, you know have a look at the key so you know check the ordering uh, on what basis you wanted to have because both are having same employ number of employees right yeah then you need to decide what basis you want to do the ordering between them if both the guys are having same then in whichever order those are coming as an input in the same order those will be there okay it won't it won't be ascending and descending in between those two okay then okay. you need to explain decide it then you need to have a separate logic for that you cannot do that here right away okay uh, i'm i'm saying that uh uh huh cricket at first uh huh then then software and the chess at the end can we do that Software uh, but how we, we are we are trying to play with this definition of order by right okay yeah right here we have three employees and we are saying hey give me cricket first and then give me software not possible right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay yeah. so yeah okay now let's have a look at it what dollar is representing how we can see that so if i if i wanted to see just look at the 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 representation now hey can you give me all the keys hey can you give me all the uh, values so if i wanted to so you know get only keys so from this flower i want to pluck something so i can say hey pluck dollar pluck double dollar pluck the so there is a function called pluck what it will go it will go to the object means a flower and you say hey pluck pluck it okay exactly like a you know plucking petals from the flower okay so now see all the values are plucked from that object and represented me as a array have a look at it can i say double dollar here go ahead and see see all the keys are coming can i say triple dollar yes go ahead and see See here, all the positions are coming. Indexes, positions. Okay. Clear, clear with single dollar, double dollar. Yes. Right? Okay. Now, let's go ahead and focus on single dollar. Now, I have to play with this data a little bit now. So, because I'm in, in proper shape now, let's play with this little bit. Uh, make this at, uh, you know, same level where designation is there and try to replace this guy okay and uh, make it proper number this one this is a uh, their network right so let's let's do this little bit now so we'll do little complex now okay now this is the array so i can use a map function on this right so i'll say hey go ahead and do the iterate over this now tell me dollar what dollar will represent now dollar will represent the first element right so this is the first element uh -huh. complete element mm -hmm. then the dollar will this and double dollar can i use a triple dollar here no because no, only we have key we have only values and those are representing mm -hmm. in the position so mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah let's go ahead now and i can say hey boss do this okay now say uh you know uh let's go ahead and say <clears throat> map and if i don't give any 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 naming over here so dollar and double dollar get used right but i wanted to give the naming over so that my job will be easy so that i can uh, data and position okay and now i'll say hey go ahead okay uh, position am i clear so far any queries no not okay, right so you, you need to you need to be very careful. Till now, whatever my query I have written, a script I have written, is that correct or not? If it is generating output, that means you are you are you are correct. Going okay, so now, okay. Yeah, see, we are getting those many objects based on the number of elements in the array. So now we okay. have four four elements over there, right? All mm -hmm. the four elements are representing array only there inside. Yes. Okay, so now can I say Okay, let's let's take the first department. So now I want to do uh, give the employees based on the department. So I can say, hey, uh, uh, let's go ahead and say department colon, and I'll say 
the entire array is represented by data, right? So I go say data dot uh, department. Let's have a look at it. How the day, you know, department and then uh, name. Okay, have a look at it. So now, are we interested in all the, right? No, right? Uh -huh. So now we can use the range or index. Now, is this okay? I'll be able to see the department properly now. Now, yeah. I wanted to represent how many elements are there in that department. So I'll go ahead and say, hey. So maybe I'll say count, colon, size of function, and employee in that department, if I wanted to say, right? So entire array of employees are represented by data. So I just simply calculate the size of that that data I'm getting. So in this software, there are three employees in the cricket, two employees, chase two employees, manufacturing one employee. Now let's go ahead and say, hey, uh, can you do these things? Uh, now in that department, I just wanted to give the player information. So players, can I say that? Players, okay, my players info, who all are there in this department? So I can say, okay. But now, if you see, the data is the array, right? So we can go ahead and say, hey, go ahead and do the map, okay? So we can say first name. Now here, if you remember carefully, did I name those variables? No. Can I use now dollar and double dollar? Yes. I go ahead here and say dollar dot first name okay comma i will say last name colon dollar dot dollar dot last name now is this is this information looks good now yes. more readable i have software mm -hmm. now there are three employees over there and then i am able to get the uh, the the um, uh, player information properly, mm -hmm. right? So player information, if you want, you need to iterate over that, right? Okay. Now let's go ahead and do little bit so we can go ahead and add few more information here. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So what is the designation of this guy? I can say designation, right? Designation colon. I have a dollar. From there, I can get it. Okay, dollar dot. I'll say, hey, give me designation. Uh, designation yeah okay now if i go ahead and uh, say uh, some employees are having uh, you know uh, we will see that so uh, i just wanted to see because we want to play with this network so i just go ahead and do that network colon dollar dot network now have a look at it okay uh -huh. So now I, I, I don't want this guy, the dollar has to be there. Okay. So how can I do that? So there is a, no, no left hand side will little, will create little space over here so that I can write it properly. So I have function called replace. Okay. I use a function called replace and uh, what it takes. It will ask, okay, what you want to replace and with what? So I want to replace, hey, I want to replace dollar and I want to replace this guy with what? A with, I have to replace with no space. Now see what error is throwing. Cannot course object to a string. Dollar, here also we are using dollar, here also we are using dollar. Dollar is representing what? Object. Now I need to say, hey, go ahead and consider this as a string or character. Now have a look at it. Clear? Dollar is replaced. Okay. Now we have, now this net worth, I don't want it to be a, a, a string. What I can do? I can go ahead and I'll say, hey, so whatever I have done so far, I'll just put it in the round bracket so it will execute this and you can pass the this as an input to some other guy so i will just go ahead here 
and I'll say as can I say number? Can I say number? Let's see what happens. Yes, I can say number. Now, have a look at it. What happens? Now, if you see, I'm able to see the number properly, but somewhere after decimal, four digits are there. Somewhere nothing is there. Somewhere only one digit is there. Okay. So mm -hmm. can my can I can I make something uniform? Yes, yes, right. After decimal two digits, mm -hmm. every net worth should get represented like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. How can I do that? Let's have a look at it. Okay. So first I need to tell, hey, this is a number. Go ahead and apply as a string. Okay. Now it's converted into string. Now here I can do formatting. So there is a syntax format colon. If you remember, we did this in, in the file name. Remember? Mm -hmm. Yes. Or a date. Remember? This same yes. thing you can do it here as well. Now I can say I can use hash dot hash hash. Have a look at it. But one, two, three. It's not a happening for one, two, three. See for this guy. If it is less than two digits, it's not happening. If it is more than two mm -hmm. digits, it's happening. So how can I fix it? Okay. So can I can I create a little space here? Okay. So can I go ahead and do this? Okay. So let's do this. I can use zero zero. Now how look at it. See here, ninety seven is also fixed. One twenty three mm -hmm. is also fixed. This guy is also. Clear? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so we can use this option. Now, this side also, if you want to fix it, right? This side, let's say, you know, you are uh, focusing on this is also proper number, right? You can go ahead and do that also. So, for example, uh, you are you wanted to have like this, right? See here. So it will allow uh, up to five value only. Five right. digits. Okay. Yeah. So it looks very uniform now. Now look at it. Uh -huh. Clear? If we want, if we want like six digit, seven digit, uh, then we need to write it like that, right? Yes. Okay. Hash will allow any value, but uh, if we put zeros, then it will uh, get to the specific value only. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So very clear. Now, if I go ahead and say, hey, okay, can I have uh, some date formatting here? So I will say create date. Okay. So create date colon. If I say now, okay, now okay. function is there. So now if you see the date, right? It's, uh, can, uh -huh. I, can I remove something? Okay. So I'll just make a space here. Designation, we are not really interested. Yeah. Okay. And, and this indent, indentation is necessary or not? Yeah. I'll come to that point. Okay. I'll come to that point. I'll show you the big mm -hmm. difference between, you know, the JSON with indent and JSON without indent. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll see that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So right now, if you look at this, I'm getting this formatting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can say that, okay, as string and in curly bracket, we can go ahead and set format colon and format you can get it from anywhere. Okay. So you can say DD MMM. Now see here, if I say 2M, you'll give a digit. Okay. If I say 3M, it will give a string, three characters. Okay. If I give four, it will be complete name. So you need to understand this. Okay. So DD 2M means it will give the month digit digit value, decimal value. Three means the three characters always. We represent like this only, right? Correct? Okay. Yes. Now, if I go ahead and say you y y y, this also works. And let me show you one thing. U U U, this also represents. Okay, U also works. Say two U means the last two digits. Single U means complete year also, see? 
Clear? Mm -hmm. Why you? Now I'll go with this uh, capital H H and small H H. Okay. Capital M M is already consumed or or uh, dedicated for the month, right? So we need to use small M. Three M's are not supported. Okay, here don't get confused with this. Okay. Then for second we have small S S. Now for milliseconds, what is there? People S, capital word. Uh -huh. Clear. Yes. And then you you can decide on the U S U S based uh, date formatting is different. India we yeah. have little different, right? You mm -hmm. can go so in US uh, MM first, right? Month yeah, comes and then day yeah. comes and then year comes. So you need to yeah. uh, set this um, uh, you know formatting over here, and then mm -hmm. yeah, use this formatting. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can you can go ahead and actually create a data type for this. Okay, so you can go ahead and say hey, go ahead and see uh, here we can create custom type. So type. Okay, and I can say. US date uh, format, okay, and I can say equal to control V here, okay, and I can go ahead and I can say control okay, C here. and instead of that this, I'll say control V. See here, if I change something over here, right? So if I change something, see here, it's getting changed, correct. Uh -huh. Right, so you can make it a reusable code. Okay, so finally, now uh, we'll stop. But before that, I wanted to show you something. Okay, so now have okay. a look at my. So, uh, so we started little moving towards the complex part. Uh, in uh -huh. tomorrow's sessions, we'll see the real use cases. Okay, so we'll try to read okay. the Excel sheet. We'll try to read the CSV file, and uh -huh. we'll try to convert them. You know, so those okay. use cases we'll see okay mm -hmm. today the last part i'll i'll try to show you so if you write okay for example let's bring that uh, script over here okay uh, copy this control a control c bring it here control a control b okay so uh, nothing wrong here okay just go ahead and stop and so i wanted to show you something uh Okay, I would actually show you. Let me create new project. One thing, very very important thing, I wanted to show you. Do we need to save this because otherwise it will create an issue? No, I'll just just hold on. Uh, D W externalize. Okay. This is the last part. I don't know why this guy is taking this much time. Okay. So come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. So now what I'll do, we'll drag the transform here. Okay. And I'll go here, control A, control B. Okay. Now if you look at the configuration XML here, have a look at it. So my entire script is getting embedded over here. Okay. okay, and this script is getting only used by this particular flow only. Now, what if uh -huh. this script is useful for some other flow also? Right, you're uh -huh. getting my point, right? This uh -huh. is right now embedded inside my transform activity, and in yes. in the XML, it won't look good. Also, it looks messy. Have a look at it. Uh -huh. Now, if I go to my transform activity here, I can externalize this. How? Let's have a look at it. Edit. You are asking me, right? What is this file option? Right? Mm -hmm. This is whatever name you want. You can give it here. Externalize. 
DW, okay, and say OK. Now, have a look at it. There is no difference here, right? In the script, it still uh -huh. looks. Now, let's go ahead and see, look at our XML. Have a look at the XML. See now. Uh -huh. Okay. What it does, it says that, hey, go ahead and refer this resource. Yep. You have externalized this. Where is this resource? Let me bring that to our working set. DW, externalize. If I go to that here in the main resources folder, okay, it creates that file. Mm -hmm. Have a look at it. Okay. If you open this, this is here. Now I can go ahead and I can use this script in some other transform activity also. Mm -hmm. now, can I do that? Yeah. If I, if I go ahead and copy this part, control C. Okay. Now let's go to the, you know, drag and create new flow. And inside this flow, configuration file. I got a flow, right? Go here and enter control V. Okay. And add the control V. And we need to remove this. Now have a look at it. Okay. I'll just save this. My XML file is very clean. If I go to my mule flow, and if I go to this transform activity, have a look at it. Oh, okay. This is called reusability. And the mule sort integration itself is the reusability, right? Mm -hmm. So if you if you look, uh, if your script, you wanted to reuse, even these scripts are, you can externalize to exchange. Okay. That is that is uh, not our responsibility, developer responsibility. That is in architect course, we teach that how to externalize your data view script in exchange itself. And mm -hmm. then that, uh, you know, that will become a library and that library you can, you can add in your, any of your project. Right okay. now we are using it within the project. If you really want mm -hmm. other projects also use your data view scripts, then you can go ahead and publish it to the exchange. And from the exchange, you mm -hmm. can, you can add it as a, you know, module to your projects. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you want to publish this project right now. So we just need to, uh, no, and... this project will get pro, you know, I'm not talking about only project. Okay. Only mm -hmm. data view scripts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right now you're talking about, uh, you know, publishing the project. I'm talking yes. about publishing data view scripts as a module, okay. as a library. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So we'll stop here today.